Okay. Um, I am not going to get into uh, talking about cutoffs and all these things that, okay, for SLS Pune, what is the cutoff for SLS NOIDA, whatever. Uh, I'm just going to talk about the uh, agenda, which is VAT and PM. Now, the VAT is in essence a shorter version, I'll say, of essay writing. So, what you will have is a pictorial VAT where you will be given two images, right? And you will be asked to write on them. Now, usually these two images will be connected and you will not really have any trouble relating the two. These will be on contemporary issues, things like that. So it shouldn't be too difficult for you to connect these two uh, statements, sorry, these two figures or photos and then write on them. What I want us to do is because you are training to be future lawyers, the idea is to connect the two images and talk about something related to the legal side of things. Meaning that if I have, say, for example, um, say, for example, a, a poster of some movie being vandalized or a theater being defaced or something like that, and I have something that talks about, let's say, um, some particular caste uh, people of some particular caste getting, let's say, beaten up or something. So then you can talk about things like uh, uh, intolerance of uh, religious intolerance in the country. You can talk about what are the laws that protect, let's say, minorities or something. Things like that are what we should be talking about. You can give some contemporary examples that people of a particular caste or tribe or whatever were lynched and things like that because they were just at the wrong place at the wrong time or they were suspected to do these, these things and uh, they got lynched by a mob and things like that. So mob lynching, etc. These are the things that you need to talk about A, either in terms of legal issues or in terms of social context issues. Point is make sure that you're not writing a general sort of essay where all you are doing is describing the images. Yes, yes, we see that there is something happening here. Okay, in this image, this is talked about. In this image, this is talked about. And that's it. That's the end of the VAT. That is not what we are supposed to do. Okay. Now, this is the pictorial VAT, which typically comes up in uh, your uh, symbiosis VAT. Uh, the return assessment test or the VAT in general gets you to focus on three things. Number one is something, one second, I think the, yeah. Number one is coherence. Number two is content and number three is communication. So when we talk about coherence, all we want is whatever thoughts you have in your mind regarding those two images or regarding, let's say, if there's a topic given to you, whatever uh, thoughts you have in your mind, they should be organized. So say, for example, instead of a pictorial VAT, let's say you have a topic-driven VAT where all you have is a, a, a heading that says, um, do women make better lawyers than men? Right? Now, you are expected to take a stand, but it's okay if it is a qualified stand. Okay? Meaning that it's okay if you're saying that in some cases, women make better lawyers than men. In some other cases, men make better. But it's unwise to say something like this as a sweeping statement. That's called a qualified response. My point is, irrespective of what sort of response you're writing, you can't say something like, okay, I think in some cases, women make better managers than uh, better lawyers than men and give reason number one, reason number two, and then say, in these, these cases, however, men might make better lawyers than women and then give reasons for men and then say, oh, wait, 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 women, oh, one more, one more, I realized. That's what I'm trying to say. Make sure that your content is thought out before you start writing it, right? If it is online, of course, typing it is there. You can cut, paste and all that saves you some effort. That's fine. But if it is a written uh, uh, assessment test, like proper physically written, you'll have to manage your thoughts first before writing the VAT. Which brings us to, wait, how do I write a VAT? What is the expectation from uh, the, B, uh, the, the law school? Uh, what should be my handwriting? What sort of words should I use? What should be my word limit, right? 
So we'll talk about all of these in this first point, coherence. The VAT is typically a two-sided sheet, all right? where you've got rule sheets, so you don't have to worry about your lines going all right. So that's not an issue. It's a two-sided uh, two sheet where you will have the title plus the lines on both sides, or you will have the two images and then lines, right? In either case, there is no limit other than the length of the rule sheet. So if I've got front and back rule sheet, the maximum you can go to is where the second sheet ends or where the second side ends. So you have to try and cover all your content within that set of lines. This is number one. Make sure that your content is done within those lines. There is no point in starting gloriously with big handwriting and then midway through the essay realize that, okay, boss, I need more space. And then you reduce the font size of your handwriting. And then later on, it just looks like a bunch of ants walking across the paper in Morse code and all that. That's not what we want to happen. So make sure that you're using some sort of uniform font size. And that is why you need to practice your max. Okay. Like I said, so Sanika, I'm not sure this time around, what are they planning? Uh, Pre-COVID and during COVID and all, it was uh, online. But this year, I'm not sure what they're planning. So I'm not going to comment on that. Like I said, I'm not sure what is their thought process. So I'm just going to leave it at that. If it is online, like I said, it is easier for us to type it out and you know edit the spellings and all of those things. If it is not, then let's just practice in either case. All right. So practice writing and practice typing both. Now, uh, word limit, like I said, there's only an upper limit. But if I want to look at a minimum sort of limit, then to be honest, if you are supposed to write an introduction and give like three paragraphs of data or justification or whatever, and you are expected to conclude well, then your essay will anyway go on to 400, 450 words, which is not too much, to be honest. All right. So let's just not keep a fixed limit, but don't make it too short. Don't give me reasons that are one, one liners, right? We will talk about what should be our, an ideal format or something in two minutes time. But for now, this is your word limit part. Handwriting, honestly, there is nothing uh, that is awarded as a bonus for good handwriting. Handwriting ke marks milte hai, that system is not there over here. But just make sure, like I said, it should be legible. Okay, that's number two. If it is online, then it doesn't even matter. You have to type it out and it's the same thing. Okay. Now, make sure that in your language, there is a set or there is a combination of easy words and the so-called fancy words. Now, I'm not saying you have to go aggressive in purposefully using fancy words, but if you have a better or a more refined word, to explain what you want to communicate, then it is better to use that word, all right? So say, for example, if instead of writing very, very angry, if I remember that there is a word called enraged or furious, that A sounds better and B, it saves words and hence space. So it's easier or rather it's better to use a better word like enraged or furious don't use very all the time. I may have mentioned this before to someone, but very is a rather uh, lazy approach to vocabulary. All right. So use the right words that denote the right intensity of the right emotion. All right. That's what I want you to be wary of. I'm not saying that there has to be uh, uh, a surfeit of fancy words, but it's better to have some nice words here and there, right? It shouldn't appear too, um, I would say, it shouldn't appear too simple in terms of language. Let's just leave it at that, okay? Idioms, yeah, I mean, it's good to use them. As long as you've used them properly, I have no issues with that. See, again, Idioms are part of vocabulary. So if you want to communicate your uh, intensity of your emotion through an idiom, that's absolutely fine. Huh. Just make sure that everything is within the limits. Okay. 
Now, uh, that takes care of the uh, flurry language part. Not required, but it will be good if you have it. That's probably about it when it comes to uh, instructions. Yes, um, your online uh, VAT, if at all it is online, might have a character limit on the top of your uh, text box where you're supposed to type it. So be mindful of that. The last two minutes, we don't want to fret around and say, okay, I'm just two characters short. Where do I remove? Where do I remove? And then, you know, stuff like that happens. That's something we should try and avoid. If it is your uh, physical back, meaning written properly, in that case, make sure that you're finishing by the last line of the rule sheet. Because like I said, even if you write PTO and you know ask for extra sheets and all, A, no one gives an extra sheet. So you have to make do. And then if you finish it on one side and the rule sheet is only on one side of the sheet, but not the second sheet, means somehow you have to finish it within that one sheet or one side. Then if you write PTO and write the last two lines of your essay elsewhere on, or rather on the second side of the sheet, then they will not read it. Even if you rightly say, please turn over leaf, they don't focus, right? Anything beyond the last line of that rule sheet is dead to them. And that means that if you leave an essay incomplete, ooh, that's going to be a big problem for you. So make sure that you are finishing your uh, essay or your VAT within the ruled sheet or within the character limit upstairs, right? So always keep an eye out on that. Just like when you send your tweets, there's always one eye on the character limit, right? Because you've got limited characters. Same principle here. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that takes care of your uh, length and planning and all that. Um, there are 20 minutes to write the VAT or it may be 30 minutes based on year on year uh, logic. Assuming there are 20 minutes, you should take two to three minutes initially to organize your thoughts. Think about what you're going to write and what you're planning to write. Take the next 15 minutes to type in your VAT or write your VAT and take the balance three or two minutes to review your VAT. Okay. Just double check spellings, punctuations, grammatical rules, capitalization, this, that, all of those things. Just do a double take for, let's say, about a couple of minutes, one or two minutes at the end. All right. So this is your 15 minute format, two to three minutes to plan, 15 minutes to write and three to two minutes balance to review. Now the same thing we can apply to the 30 minute format but the rules change slightly. Five minutes to think, plan your essay, think and plan your essay or your VAT. 20 minutes to write, and then the last five minutes to review. Okay, so this becomes 30 minutes plan. Now, we said that coherence is crucial, means you should have a proper beginning, middle and end. The next thing that they're looking for is content, meaning, if you are providing justifications for your opinion, if you're providing facts and figures or external data to support your opinion, etc., then are you quoting those data sources or are they too old in terms of data, right? These are the sorts of things they will check in the content part. All right. Are your reasons logically sensible or not? Hmm, wait, this appears to be a flaw of uh, what is that? Uh, red herring, if you've seen that in your books, flaw of red herring or uh, something like uh, flaw of distraction, things like that. So if you notice that, oh, okay, there are some flaws in this, then I should stay away from writing such arguments or providing such premises. With me so far? Yes, no, can't say. People, there's only one person responding. What about the rest? Okay, I'm going to assume that people can hear me. So I'll just go ahead to the third C, which is communication, which includes your vocabulary and like we said, idioms, grammar, rules, spellings, and blah, 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 all those things, right? 
So this becomes our uh, 3C approach that I like to call for our uh, VAT. Uh, if you want, you're free to take screenshots of this, not an issue. So we'll just go on to the next bit. Now, I think the next bit is the one that yeah has all of your instructions. Now, let's quickly talk about what sorts of VATs can come up. One of which I have already told you, which is the pictorial VAT. So you'll have photos that need to be, need to be connected and you need to write a VAT out of them. The other is something called a choice driven VAT, where you, excuse me, as the term suggests, you will be asked to make a choice, right? Now the choices can be finite or infinite. What? Okay. Finite choice means I will give you the range of values and you will have to pick from among them. Something like between Virat Kohli and Sachin Tendulkar, who is the better ODI batsman? Tough question, bro. But anyway, you have to pick between Virat Kohli and Sachin Tendulkar. You can't randomly then say, sir, I think Sehwag is the best. Oh, don't do that. Okay. So that is called your finite choice. But then what is infinite choice? Again, exactly what it says is of all the batsmen in the world or of all the T20 batsmen in the world, who is the best? So I'm not saying that the list has only five candidates, six candidates, 10 candidates, whatever it may be of all of them, who is the best or worst or whatever. That becomes your opinion driven, sorry, your choice driven back. All right, choice driven band is finite or infinite. Okay, the next thing is what is called as an opinion driven band where you are expected to say true or false to a question or to a statement or whatever, or you are expected to agree or disagree. Is Virat Kohli the best ODI batsman ever? Hmm. I agree because blah, blah, blah. No, I disagree because blah, blah, blah. This is what is called your opinion driven VAT. All right. You can also write it in the form of a sentence. Virat Kohli is the best ODI batsman. True because blah, blah, blah. Or you say, no, 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 false because blah, blah, blah. Now, a lot of times people think that uh, you know what, I will purposely take the, let's just say, unconventional opinion or pick an unconventional choice just to score brownie points. Absolutely useless. I have no problem if you are picking up the standard or the expected or the normal or the usual response. There's no need to purposely stand out from the crowd. So if you feel that, no, no, Sachin is the better batsman, because one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, but Kohli also has some part of one and no, but uh, Sachin, no, but Kohli. Oh, wait, in the end, just because it's controversial and fun, don't pick Kohli or rather don't pick an opinion that is different or choice that is different from what you be. All right. So this is exactly what I'm trying to say. You have to be watchful of what the question is asking of you. So true, false, agree, disagree, phrase it however you want. It is what is called as an opinion driven uh, VAT. Now, then comes something called, excuse me, then comes something called an analytical VAT. Now, as the term suggests, when I say analysis, it does not mean that I'm focusing only on one aspect of the topic. So if I say that uh, I want to analyze the last and current term of our prime minister. All right. So if I want to say that, or I say it straightforward and say that I want to analyze the tenure of RPM. So if all I talk about is focusing on reducing imports, does that mean I've analyzed the entire tenure? Does that mean I've analyzed the entire tenure just by talking about uh, what? 
reducing imports in all the paragraphs yes no i'll put it differently to you imagine that i want to analyze you as a person and then i say okay boss all i need to know who you are as a person is your academic background wait but from my academic background how can you claim that this is how i am as a person getting the problem so analytical tells me what is that i am supposed to comment or i am supposed to make certain judgments based on information all right so one based on information and two something that i need to also uh, reiterate is it will be based on a variety of areas so it's not just academics that play a role in determining someone's personality or commenting on how that person is it will also be based on interactions with siblings interactions with parents interactions with batch mates uh how do you treat uh, uh, waiters for example talks about your character as well right so all these things together will tell me who you are as a person that's what we mean by various aspects of a topic all right abstract you don't need to get into so i'll just focus on the pictorial ones so like i said make sure that you are connecting those images before you write the story on them okay and of course as future legal professionals the expectation is that you will consider uh, these uh, hints or these topics in a social or in a, some sort of cultural or in some sort of legal aspect all right so that takes care of your uh, pictorial analytical choice and opinion part now comes format wise One second, format. So, how should I begin my web? One second. Give me a minute. Is something in my eye? I'll keep talking, but I'll just turn the video off for a minute. Right. Uh, so, assuming it's an opinion-driven web or a choice-driven web, the first thing to remember is that when you start your web, don't just copy paste the topic. meaning let's say my topic is a choice driven vat where the topic is very simple um who is the best odi batsman virat or sachin all right now how would you introduce this vat ideally you would start something by saying um today we have been asked who is the best batsman and i feel it is uh, let's say sachin because blah 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 and then you start all right look at the first bullet point first part it says restate the topic without making it obvious now if i'm starting my essay by saying today we have been asked to do this 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 then aren't you making it obvious getting it so make sure that your introduction is not just a copy paste of the question statement itself all right okay but what do you mean by restate the topic without making it obvious what is this weird thing you are telling us to do very simple can you start your essay by saying cricket has a fanatical fan following in india and is the de facto na uh, national sport and its players often have uh, sorry and its followers often have strong opinions about who is the best batsman i think and then you share your opinion right this is what i meant by stating restating the topic without making it obvious okay and then you have your re, uh, option sorry opinion or choice or whatever and my reasons are as follows now then we say firstly then the reason then the explanation of that reason through data etc 
same goes for secondly lastly finally whatever you can play around with the number keywords and all of that but that itself is not the the bigger issue right are we all clear with this format anyone please let me know in the chat box whether you are clear with this format for opinion and your choice driven maths like one person has answered my gosh everyone else okay fine now analytical because i've got a variety of things to talk about right can also be written like this or like this that's absolutely fine see when we say analysis all i want is that variety of ideas something that tells me that you're looking at the topic from a lot of angles not just a singular angle that's all there is okay now all of that is done that takes care of vat we will now go on to personal interview now what is the very first question that an interviewer is likely to ask you in an ai what's the very first question after the usual pleasantries of course good morning good afternoon whatever what's the first question that the panel is likely to ask you right correct tell me something about yourself and the very first time you hear that question you are always confused okay what goes into it what does not go into it what should i talk about what should i not talk about and more important is how do i make this answer interesting right now beyond your name i would ideally prefer that you don't talk about anything that is likely to be on the form and talk instead about things that are not likely to already be in the form now what do i mean by that so let's pick up a student uh, i have a student here let's say ananya now good morning ananya have a seat so ananya tell me something about yourself my name is ananya i stay here and this is where i've done my schooling from till 10 and i've chosen this stream in uh, uh, 11th and 12th and i've done my 12th from this college and i got this much percent in 10th and i got this much percent in 12th oh gosh what do i do with all of this information because that's already there on my form so as the interviewer i'm not getting any value addition i can just read your resume and then be done with it why do you want to spend your time talking to me in a situation where i am already in a hurry and you want to tell me things i have already seen so that's an unproductive use of everyone's time okay fine then what am i supposed to talk about simple like i said you talk about things that are not there on the cv or not there in the form hmm are we likely to write our strengths or weaknesses in a form by a, a b school sorry a law school strengths weaknesses no do we talk about what drove us to pursue a career in law no do we talk about what are the areas that we are keen on exploring after our bachelor's in law bllb bblb is much later i'm saying are we clear about or rather are we likely to write all these things no these are the things that you should talk about in your tell me something about yourself all right so i'll give you my example do not use this as a carbon copy response now if someone were to ask me uh so i should tell me something about yourself i would reply by saying something like 
uh well good evening my name is abhishek sorry afternoon right sorry well, good afternoon my name is abhishek and i am an mba graduate from symbiosis and i have spent the past 10 years or so of my life teaching people how to make better use of their language skills and help them crack b school entrance exams with the idea that in later stages of my life i can bring this gift of language to a lot of people i would also say that i am a blah blah and blah individual and i just want to make sure people have the same exposure to the language as i do damn that sounded good now this is something i literally made up on the spot i haven't rehearsed and i'm not reading off any prompter all right this is an answer that i made up on the spot but my point is you see what is being talked about in this answer nothing related to my family background nothing related to where i stay and what all have i done i have just talked about my latest degree right even no uh, discussion on the, the the marks or cgpa and stuff like that jump straight to what have i been doing so far and what is my longer aspiration or goal in the grand scheme of things and three of my best qualities all right so this is what i want you guys to do create a 1 minute or a 1 minute 30 second sort of answer for your tell me something about yourself anything that you would like to add that forms a story that says that okay i have been surrounded by lawyers uh, all my life because all my family members are lawyers and that is why i choose to get into law it's okay absolutely no harm in that nothing wrong in that that's one sort of law candidate who knows boss okay i'm clear i want to do law this is this and clear clear bang 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 one after the other but there are kids who realized in their 11th or 12th later on that they wanted to do law so something must have happened they thought their initial plan was this then some incident happened they overheard someone saying something or uh, someone spoke to them uh, about so and so thing and then that transition transitionary event or those transitionary events switch them to a career in law now i don't know in which category you are but i am saying you need to wrap your story around that part yes no okay now Sanika has another question. Should we uh, add achievements if they are really good ones in the introduction? Um. Hmm. Okay. This is highly subjective because you might be a champion in school for a sport. That's good. But what if that sport is sack race or limbu chamcha? Do you see my problem? I am saying that. if it is something that is a significant meaning it has to be district state or national level one or we say that okay this is something that has shaped me in some way shape or form in terms of a it has helped me somewhere it has shaped my my thought process somehow all of these things if you can justify then those are enough all right so at achievements when you ask me my answer is simple is it something that helps in your story building either as a transition or as a continuation whatever if it does add it that's why i said create multiple versions if you want and then based on the time that you are taking etc you can trim down or expand the versions So say for example, I have created a one minute thirty second version for tell me something about yourself, and in spite of talking repeatedly, 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 my limit is two. On the day I have two minutes. On the day that means I have to somehow try to finish it within two minutes. All right. 
Tell me something about yourself as a concept. Are we clear? Okay. Now, moving forward. Uh, before we go to the other questions, a couple of basics. Number one is make sure that you are keeping a smile on your face. Right? Um, true story. Uh, in my uh, B school interview at uh, Simasis, I unwittingly blurted out some extra part to my answer of tell me something about yourself, which was not planned. I had not planned that I will say something extra. But then I said something extra, which was not there in my script, but maybe because of nervousness, I just bl bl blurted it out. And then I looked at him. He started smiling because he knows he's going to ask me a clear-cut follow-up question on that. Even I started smiling because I know he's going to ask me a similar question. I was expecting it. I said, okay, okay, okay. So fine. Let, I've already started making the answer in my head. So, and then he asked the question and then bang, my head starts working and spewing out the answer. Right? Point being that this does tend to happen. So, it's okay. That's why we want you to get adequate mock practice. Now, um, what were we talking about through this example? Right. We were talking about some general do's and don'ts. So, make sure that you are smiling throughout the process. At no point, even if you're frustrated, don't show any sense of exasperation or, oh, sorry, I, I, oh, I forgot what to do and all of that. All these strong expressions like, uh, and all these things. Stay away from all of them. Right? Be discreet in your movements. All right? Now, the next thing that you need to understand is, what? Body language. Okay. Now, I know you. I've said one part of it, which is to smile. I've also said the other part of it is to ensure that you are not making strong expressions of uh, disgust or exacer uh, exasperation or uh, you're not looking to, let's say, uh, uninterested things like that. Yes, sir. My name is Abhishek, and I am from so and so. Uh, my God, even the interviewer will fall asleep. So body language. As for body language, one key point is you are allowed to move your hands, but assume that your uh, shoulder area, which is your bicep area, is stuck to your sides. Now imagine if these biceps are stuck to your sides. What is the range of movement? Just this much, probably a little bit here, probably a little bit here. That's it. That's all that you're allowed to move. You can't say that I will decide what to do and today we will do this, but see, there is also this and all these grand gesture movements, please don't do. Okay. Don't bend over, but be a little bit further than a straight back position. Right? That helps a lot purely in terms of psychological uh, effects. That also shows that you are concentrating on what the panel member is saying and you're trying to understand all those things and take corrective uh, actions. So make sure that you are sitting a little bit forward because that shows that you are curious in short. Okay. So that is all about body language. Make sure your movements are discreet. Movements are, you know, on these lines, these radii. Okay. And we need to make sure that we are forward sitting to ensure that we show or we display a little bit of curiosity. Okay. So that takes care of your body language part. Now, tell me something about yourself. Done. Hmm. Why do you want to get into law school? All right. That's the next obvious question. Or why do you want to become a lawyer? 
that's the next obvious question so how would you answer that can someone tell me i am not looking for you to tell me your answer properly no 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 what are the things we should talk about or any one thing that we should talk about why do you want to join law school why do you want to become a lawyer what should we talk talk about ideally i hope people can hear me otherwise all of this is pretty pointless no okay now your why law school or why law usually has one or more of the standard reasons see i am not saying that uh, i want an answer specific to you like okay ananya answer this question okay manas we answer this question no 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 i think you misunderstood all i'm saying is what sort of things should that answer contain when we say reasons so let's think about it who are the sorts of people who become lawyers by getting through law school think of it this way judges sir all judges have attended law school of course they have ha huh. okay fine what is the job of judges pretty straight forward the job of judges is to uphold people's rights and deliver justice ha huh. could that be my reason you need to think about that so if let's say you have seen any sort of injustice happen to you or your family members uh, in any capacity right where there was some sort of legal let's say protection that you could have gotten or legal benefits that you have gotten but didn't get because of whatever reason i don't want to get into that but that is one potential reason why you might have chosen to get into law school correct one of the reasons so if you are trying to get rid of injustice that becomes a good reason to join law school right okay apart from an injustice that you or your family members have faced now these judges also usually form part of let's say committees to explore some bills and things like that or to enact new laws etc so another reason why a lot of people want to become lawyers by joining law school and all that is to get into policy making where maybe you have seen some loophole somewhere or you have let's say understood that you want to create more laws etc in some particular domain for example let's say you want to work on marriage laws because there are certain loopholes just as an example randomly right that can be a reason for wanting to join law school right now what apart from these two so a you want to ensure that there is justice and there is upholding of our constitutional rights so that's one two is you are trying to get into policy making because you need to create laws for let's say some cause that is dear to you or let's say some loopholes that are taken advantage of and you want to plug them something like that what else the third one is again something common where you have seen that okay boss people lack that sort of legal knowledge and hence they don't get their worth meaning that they don't get the benefit of the law to help them in their cause right and it's not that they don't get the benefit because the law is the problem it's just that they are not even aware that the law is on their side so basically create awareness in terms of legal rights etc right social change etc is part of the second one that we said policy changing and all that this is more of creating awareness and helping people 
get the law on their side and you know get them some benefits right to those who a maybe cannot afford or b who just don't know how to approach so these three are the typical reasons why anyone three or four whatever i said are the typical reasons why anyone would join law school now you have to figure out what is there in your set of reasons i am not saying it has to be pick one of these three make them multiple but make sure that you are thinking about this answer because this is the sort of game changer answer if you give me rubbish reasons like yes okay lawyers are well respected in communities and it will give me a big fat paycheck and uh, or or something as stupid as i want to become the next harvey specter and things like that they tell me that as a candidate you are way too immature and i am not looking for children i am looking at people who are on their way to becoming adults and then becoming responsible members of the society so i am not looking for children so i am as in uh, as a uh as a panelist i am okay with cutting off these sorts of people all right so that is your why law school and hence why lawyer now you may be asked only why law school you also have to then maybe prepare for an answer that talks about what do you see yourself doing in the long run now how do i answer that i don't know what i'm going to have for dinner let alone 5 years from now 10 years from now now think about it practically 5 years from now where would you see yourself you would see yourself as just having exited law school right so the only answer that you have to offer for where do you see yourself 5 years from now is i will be done with my law i see myself finishing law school with flying colors and picking up my uh, role or starting off with my role all right in a firm or in an organization with whom i have been employed or i have been placed aisa kuch bolo that's the max you can say right Because what else can you say beyond that? You haven't done anything. All you've been doing has been studying for five years. So it's okay to talk about an answer in that way, All right? But what if it asks ten years or long term? Now that is something you have to answer for yourselves. This is an answer I may not be able to help you with, because this is more of the answer that comes from within types. Now I can't. formulate an answer for you because otherwise it end up sounding let's say fake or whatever right but at least what you can do is think about this essentially it will be the same three things that we talked about in terms of why lawyer all right or, or rather why do you want to join law school the answer for this and the answer for that is broadly the same so you needn't worry all right short term long term goals etc sorted now let's go on to do you have strengths and weaknesses or oh, sorry uh, tell me your strengths and weaknesses first things first be clear when it comes to your strengths be open and say that yes i would describe myself as this 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 right make sure that if you are saying that xyz is your strength you have some evidence or some sort of incident or something to back it up don't just shoot blindly in the air and say that okay yeah these are my strengths just give me a minute right so um where were we Hmm, where were we? Yeah, we were talking about strengths and weaknesses. So, as I was saying, make sure that you have some sort of evidence or some sort of incident that showcases this strength of yours, or something that happened that made you realize that this was your strength. Make sure to also pick up strengths that are relevant to a lawyer. Hmm, that brings us to the next question. Now, what do I say in this? see 
you may have 10 strengths but i am looking at the three or four top strengths that make sense to me as a law school panel member selection committee member right so what am i looking for in the next generation of lawyers think about it i'm looking at someone who has good communication skills clearly i am also looking at someone who can find flaws in reasoning i'm looking at basically logical thinkers all right i am looking at people with convincing skills because whatever arguments you make in the court have to be convincing so these are the qualities that you might want to include as strengths assuming you have them if you don't have the strengths that i am talking about please for heaven's sake don't mention them lest you get caught all right then comes another question weaknesses now what do i do with weaknesses some people have this horrible habit of portraying their strengths as weaknesses i work too hard sometimes oh ho 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 i push myself over and beyond the limit sometimes oh ho 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 my heavens don't get into all of this nonsense no one is perfect neither am i claiming to be but what i can do is admit that yes i have certain flaws certain weaknesses but i am also doing this 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 to control those weaknesses or to nullify or negate those weaknesses or to work on those weaknesses so make sure that you are saying that yes i don't uh, uh, i don't tend to do blah 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 right and that is my weakness because it has impacted me negatively when blah 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 happened but what i have realized is that yes there is a problem that needs to be addressed and i'm fixing it by doing blah 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 right so this becomes your weakness part so don't get into whole uh, lying and you know manipulating to say that oh, yeah yeah i i you know my strength is my weakness i am too emotional or i am too workaholic and nonsense like that don't don't get into that okay strengths and weaknesses done any other questions that anyone would like to have me answer because we are at the end of the session so i just wanted to make sure everyone's answers are in or uh, questions are in sorry okay so the pi round usually ends with the panel member saying thank you right to which you also reply with thank you and have a nice day have a nice evening or whatever based on the time of day and that's it you just shake hands if you are accustomed to shaking hands if not that's okay for females it's not too uh, frowned upon i will say if you don't shake hands that's absolutely fine most of the cases they won't really mind but for men it is important to shake hands with whomever they are uh, interviewing right now why should we take you is another question that comes up which i forgot to mention why should we take you simple just look at their website right every b school or law school or engineering school or medical school whatever has a website that talks about something called mission statement or values whatever right and there they will outline what is their organization in this case all about all right and what sorts of people they are looking for so from the 10 let's say strengths that you may have try to showcase those couple of things that they are looking for right so for example some college says that yes we are uh, our entire foundation is not just knowledge but also service to others right 
or some other law school says our motto is to train legal professionals uh who deliver justice something like that i'm saying you talk about these three four bits in your uh, why should we take you all right that's the most we can do right now um okay sanika will take that question separately at the end of the class because that's an answer that is unique to you i don't want to get everyone involved in this you can just give me 2 minutes and we we'll... yeah what else is there anything else that you would like me to answer okay so bari has an interesting question um my background does not suggest that uh, i uh, want to take up law so how do i answer that i have a totally different background now pari you will fall under the logical train of thought category to law or the transition category transition category right which means what there is something that should have happened in your life some encounter chance encounter with someone or some incident or whatever that made you think about law and law school and the roles etc correct this incident is what i want you to think about right which then drove your motivation that okay now that this incident has happened to me this is what i want to ensure and to ensure this law school is the way to go that if you can answer then that's fine all right cv okay so sanika as for the cv itself just take a, a word file or a pdf file of your uh, cv keep a soft copy excuse me soft copy ready and send it to the verbal mentor at your center all right um because i am not uh, in the position to handle 50 cvs <laughs> excuse me i am not in a position to handle 50 cvs that's why i'm saying just send it to your mentor at the center that person will take care of it right or just inform your mentor that okay uh, are you available to take a look at it? all right anything else uh if there is nothing that's it from my end if there are any questions you can reach out to me on i'll just write this down okay now all of you can see this so it's abhishek.narayan@imsindia.com is there anything that's left please reach out uh that's it from my end thank you so much for attending all the best we look at getting your mock cvs also uh, sorry mock uh, pis also started just pay attention to your whatsapp groups and you will get the next instructions okay now uh, sanika you have mentioned certain weaknesses um i would say get rid of the first one because that's too strong a word all right the rest of them you add these two that's fine but make sure you are also talking about what you are doing to overcome them correct because there are still some people in the audience i'm not stating what you've written but you know what i mean right so get rid of the first one as for the second and third they are okay but make sure that you're talking about how you are responding to these weaknesses how you are overcoming these challenges all right so as for weaknesses please make sure to not pick weaknesses that are detrimental to your candidature okay i am short tempered oh my gosh that's a really bad answer right if there's nothing else then uh, let's call it an evening once again thank you for attending all the best we'll see you on the other side thank you Thank you.